Hey guys, welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth McCoy, your host. Got a special episode. I'm reviewing the 2019 Nissan Leaf E Plus or Plus, depending on what country you're in. This is the one with the bigger battery and I uh, want to reach out and say thank you to Nissan Canada for allowing me the use of this vehicle for about a week. Been driving it around to get a lot of good impressions. So let me first start by telling you some of the specs of this car, just in case you don't know. So the Nissan LEAF comes with a 160 kilowatt motor now, so it's basically a tweaked motor that's got offers more power. The biggest thing about the Plus is the battery pack. It's 62 kilowatt hours now, up from 40 for the um, model year 2018. Now the 40 kilowatt hour pack is still available. It's uh, so Nissan's running with two options of the LEAF. You've got your regular LEAF and the LEAF Plus. That pu pushes out 214 horsepower and 250 pound-feet of torque, which are the which is the more important number. From a charging, not much has changed. Still has the 6.6 uh, kilowatt onboard charger for level one, level two. But what they've done is they've upped uh, the uh, DC fast charging to be capable of up to 100 kilowatts. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on on this show. One thing Nissan does provide with their vehicles is a portable, is a charge cord like everybody, but theirs is a 120 and a 240 EVSE. So you actually get a level one, level two cord with it because it has an adapter for a 110, 120 household plug here in North America, and then also a plug for a dryer type outlet. So you can pull more amps out of that. It's a nice little feature. It actually saves people from having to go out and buy a level two wall charger if they don't want to. So more of the specs. So it's a front wheel drive car as most of the uh, uh, B, uh, battery electric vehicles are now with uh, four wheel disc brakes, 11.14 uh, uh, inch vented fronts and 11.5 vented rear. So that's nice to have. It's got a really quick tur turning diameter of every, anywhere from 34.8 to 36.1 feet, depending on which model you're driving. Uh, independent McPherson strut with coil spring and stabilizer, stabilizer bars for the front suspension and torsion beam with integrated stabilizer, stabilizer bar, excuse me, for the uh, rear suspension, which actually handles the road quite well. And it's very similar to what's on the 40 kilowatt. Now, obviously with this car, we have more weight. So um, because of that bigger battery pack, Nissan has had to beef up the suspension just slightly and also tweak things like the e-pedal and they've also provided more power of course because of the weight. Um, the wheelbase is 106.3 inches with an overall length of 176.4 inches. The ground clearance is up slightly about four millimeters higher because of the battery pack is a little thicker being able to cram uh, 60, uh, 62 kilowatts of battery pack uh, cells into a very similar form factor that's on the 40 kilowatt and I'll, uh, and I'll get a little bit more info on that. Five passenger with an interior uh, compartment volume of 92.4 square feet and also with a cargo volume of 30 square feet when the second row is folded. As I mentioned, it's 4,751 pounds of a gross uh, vehicle weight on, on the, uh, the vehicle and totals total weight ranges anywhere from 3780 to 3850 uh, from that. So that's a quick rundown on the specs. And lastly, because of the battery pack size, it has an EPA rated range of 226 miles, or here since I'm in Canada, 364 kilometers. And that's something I'm gonna actually put to the test. So this is a, that was a quick introduction about the vehicle and you've seen some, some video and B-roll as I'm uh, talking about. So just looking at the menu system here on the uh, 2019 LEAF Plus, it's a little bit different than the 2018 model year. It's got a slightly different look, a little bit more modern looking. And I know I talked about this when I uh, videoed it at the Detroit uh, Auto Show when I was down there, but I've now that I've got the real car here, I can do a little bit more. Uh, and see what's differences. So it's got basically very similar icons that it had before, but obviously it's going to have a little bit nicer colors, just a little bit more modern look to it uh, with some updated information. Uh, it's funny how seeing SMX fuel prices here <laughs> that you could subscribe to. Why you would on electric car, I don't know. But hey, anyway, the main menu, and you can set, these are kind of like cards, and you can set them up as defaults and things like that. So uh, different things. But if we go through the menus quickly, you will notice that, you know, there's a little bit different look to it, but all the uh, the base type of uh, options are available. So I won't go through all of them because you can, there are lots of in-depth videos. Certainly um, one of the things I like is the EV info is still similar as far as that goes. And uh, here it shows, you know, um, how much range I have and uh, all that good stuff. So it's very similar screens that there were before. Driving range still shows the uh, fried egg approach, as we call it. Now, you will notice this is much snappier. In, the, in my uh, 2018 Leaf, it takes uh, a couple of seconds to... Uh, 
uh, for that to come up. So it uh, does take a little bit more time, um, uh, maybe half a second longer or something like that. So, um, but that's certainly going on. So that's not a, not that bad of a thing. Um, let me go back here. I got this uh, sports flash, which I don't really care about uh, for at this point. So the EV info, everything else is still the same, you know, nearby stations, uh, EV settings, all that kind of stuff um, is there. You can change. So I haven't really changed options in the menu, just the look and feel, and they've made it much snappier. Uh, of course, this has X, uh, Sirius XM uh, and Bluetooth audio streaming. I was streaming earlier, USB input and so forth. Um, audio controls are very similar where you can check um, you can check audio controls, you can change clock speeds, all that kind of clock times, excuse me, all that kind of stuff, camera options, uh, and so forth. Um, so basically not much difference in the um, uh, 2019 Leaf Plus, other than a little bit more snappier um, system with a little bit nicer screen and uh, all that good stuff. Um, now the map is nice. Um, the map's probably the biggest difference that we'll see here. Um, it does, it has more of a CarPlay-ish type of look to it. And it's much snappier if I uh, pinch uh, to zoom. Uh, I think I'm already zoomed all the way in. So if I go out with it, it uh, it does uh, zooms in there. Okay, so you can see it's a little bit much more snappier than it was before um, from that perspective in uh, in in doing yes, a pinch and zoom type of movements. And um, it's got you know all kinds of different uh, points of interest that you can come up with. So very similar, just you know changing changing the look of all the icons, which is something that's nice, just a little bit more modernized, because I know one of the biggest complaints about this, um, you know, was, uh, was basically the look and feel. So they made it more interesting. And there's not a lot of differences in the options here. You know, you can look for charging stations, all that kind of stuff. It's just much snappier. I mean, that's, that's, that took half a second and usually it would take a second or so for it to come up on the older. So just much snappier, uh, from that, uh, from that perspective, um, and zoom in, zoom out in the different settings as well for traffic that you can do again, going back to your settings. So much nicer screen. I still love the, the camera system, of course, that uh, is in the leaf. It's got the forward looking camera. It's got the three, 60 on this side, um, movement detections as well. And then you can get a side profile. So if you're parking next to a curve, that's what this gives you a very handy feature. So you don't get the dreaded curb rash. And then of course, back to normal. If you, if I put it in reverse, I will get a reverse backup camera. And if I do that now, then you'll see that, uh, that camera come up. Oh, I got to put it in reverse. There we go. And you'll see that camera come up. And if you want a full screen of that, you can just press the camera button again, and it'll take you a couple times to the full screen backup camera. So it's not the greatest, but it works quite well. It's exactly the same as the Model uh, 18 Leaf, so really no difference there. For the main information display, nothing's really changed here. It still has the same menu system as before, um, which I can run through quickly. Uh, it has your, when you're in cruise mode, um, in Pro Pilot or just driving, it'll show cars in front of you. Um, shows what's on, what's off as far as some of the safety systems go. Uh, here you have your digital speedometer with the Bluetooth audio showing and uh, directional compass. On that screen, you've got your tire pressure monitor, TPMS. You've got your drive computer, uh, which I've just started, and I'll look at those numbers in more detail coming up. Your chassis control, which is your traction control system uh, on that menu. Uh, here we have our information. I just uh, cleared this when I picked up the car, so it doesn't have much data on it. I've only drove it at maybe 25 or so kilometers, so I will get more data as we go to see what the uh, average econ history is. But that's nice to have. Here's another full compass showing the street as well and weather. Uh, in a small way, that's partly cloudy and sunny. Um, it's, of course, the audio source and what's playing, uh, it's streaming audio, and then your temperature gauge, which hasn't moved at all since I've got this car, so I have to admit, in battery capacity. And um, of course, charging time uh, there, and I will do some charges later on and when I do the road trip. And then of course, kind of a lot of the people default to this menu screen, which shows your power and your range in a nice big number um, from that. Then you have all the different settings. There's nothing really different on here that I've been able to find. Everything is exactly the same um, as it was in the, uh, or as it is in the 2018 Leaf. So there's really nothing. I'm going to go through all this stuff here. Um, I've set it up for me. And then we're back at that information menu, which has chassis control and all that other good stuff. So um, that's really a quick tour of the dash. And of course, if you like the digital speedometer, it's there along with the analog and different warning. Features. So what I'm going to do next is actually test the battery charging and the range capabilities, more so the charging capabilities. I can tell you that in the week of driving this, um, I, I've only had to charge once and that's only because you'll see in the upcoming video that I wanted to test out the fast charging uh, and that portion's coming up. 
Otherwise, I wouldn't have had to charge it till probably tomorrow. So I've had it for the entire week. So it's really been good. It started with about 370, 380 kilometers of range. And uh, I've done a combination of city and highway driving uh, over the last week, and it's been holding up exceptionally. So I do have to comment that the range is noticeable, the increase in range, as is the driving characteristics. I find it, it's rated about a half a sec second zero to 60 faster than the 40 kilowatt hour version leaf but I didn't really notice a difference to me it feels about the same in fact you can feel that weight a little bit it feels slightly slower even though it's not but it's very managed and very controlled and I do like how Nissan has tweaked the suspension to handle that extra weight giving because we do have a little bit more lower center of gravity it's just a very comfortable car and you can feel the weight you can feel that it's a little bit more substantial than the 40 kilowatt and the 40 kilowatt is actually quite substantial as well. So now what's coming up in the next section of videos, first of all, I'm going to test the DC fast charging. That'll be explained. I'm gonna do a, a, a see how fast I can get a pull from the Nissan Leaf. There are reports that it can pull up to 60 to 70 kilowatts sustained. So I'll see what I can get there. And then after that, I'm gonna go on a road trip. I'm gonna do about 700 kilometers uh, in, a, in a nice circle in Southwestern Ontario. And I'm gonna stop three times to fast charge as much as I can, probably 15 to half an hour uh, minute uh, stops for fast charging. But I'll explain more of that as I go, because uh, I know one of the concerns for people is the battery temperatures. I do have Leaf Spy Pro in this vehicle. I'm using my, uh, my setup. I put it in this vehicle so I can monitor all the stats. And I know that a lot of folks are concerned because this is a bigger battery, uh, it still doesn't have active cooling. It's still Nissan's passive cooling with no liquid, no fans or anything. How is it going to hold up in the heat? That's what I'm here to test for you and get as much data as I can. I can tell you preliminary, um, this thing has handled the heat very well. We've had some days, the last couple days uh, prior to this, we've had some temperatures in the 25 to 26 degrees Celsius range. And um, even with some fast charging, I, I had a hard time getting the battery really, really hot. So I'm going to have to wait and see how it performs with these multiple fast charging. What I can tell you is what Nissan told me. They've changed the, tweaked the chemistry in this pack again to be more heat resistant and to be able to disperse heat much more efficiently in the passive mode. So what that's a combination of chemistry change in the battery pack. I don't know what the formula is, um, but I'm sure somebody will find it out eventually. And it's, it's the build of the pack, the way that they put the pack together, the cells, they've welded it differently, constructed it slightly different, so it disperses heat better. So let's get to the fast charging uh, situation first and let's see how that goes. Well, hey guys, this is my first time I'm going to rapid charge the Leaf Plus here. Uh, I came to a Petro Canada station here in Milton where they have the only 100 kilowatt uh, Chatamo, all CCS slash Chatamo fast charger that's in this, uh, I think in the whole province right now. Um, Petro Canada is launching, a, has started a trial program for EV fast uh, charging and they're going to be deploying um, combo stations like this uh, throughout across Canada over the next uh, year or so. So this is their first one. Now I want to I want to say a quick thank you to the Petro Canada person who monitors the plug share app because I messaged them a couple times to find out if this if these chargers were capable of beyond 50 Chatamo charging and one of these chargers is it's uh, this one here because it has the right the thicker cable for it um, the other one just is, is set at 50 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, charge the Leaf Plus uh, for probably about half an hour or so get it up to about 80 percent maybe a little bit more see how it uh, manages to charge up to 80 percent and then see how it tapers down um, i've been seeing reports that it should pull around 65 to 70 kilowatts up to about 80 percent and then taper down into the 40s uh, up to 100. now i'm not going to go right to 100 on this uh, i'll get maybe to 80 or 90 i'll see how long it takes and uh, and i'll of course monitor the temperatures and uh, i'll show you what we're starting at right now Okay, so here's the Leaf Spy Pro of what I'm starting at. You can see that the uh, state of charge is 42.7%. Battery temps are 24 to 25 degrees, just uh, hitting 26 degrees C. The outside temperature is 26 degrees C. So I have to admit, so far in my driving of the Leaf Plus, it's managed the temperatures quite well. Um, it's, it hasn't really gone much higher than the outside temperature, even with some driving. Now, I will put that through its paces on the weekend when I do a lot more driving, but wanted to give you this snapshot now. Now, if I go to the dash and to the GOM, it shows something a little bit different. Obviously, it shows 35% uh, on the GOM. So uh, let me get started. I stepped away from the car for a bit and uh, I took the key with me and for some reason the charging stopped when I came back and it stopped. I'm not sure if it's a hiccup with the charger or just because I walked away, I'm not sure, but uh, I restarted it. So it's been running for about 
I would say 12 minutes or so. And it's uh, it's steady at about 54 to 55 kilowatt of pull. So just a quick update, I'm uh, eight plus minutes into this. Uh, like I said, it stopped a little bit. So it was running for a few minutes and then it stopped. So I'll add maybe another five minutes to that. So I'm into 13, 14 minutes. You can see it's at 61.2%. The temperature has gone up to 33.2 from 29.4 to 33.2. But it is uh, pulling a little bit more, closer to 56 kilowatts now. One thing I wanted to mention is I climbed under the car as much as I could to try to hear if there's a fan or anything like that, that there's some speculation that there might be a fan in the Leaf Plus to help keep the temperature down, but then I couldn't hear really a fan or feel any other air movement beyond what's already out here. So it was a rumor and I don't have any validation and Nissan does not confirm that there is a fan. They It's still passively cooled. Uh, they just say that they've changed the chemistry to allow for better heat dissipation uh, heat tolerance and uh, the way that the pack is welded and put together with that slightly uh, almost point, uh, I think it's uh, four millimeters in, in greater thickness that it dissipates heat better uh, that's what they say so I'll we'll continue to uh, monitor this charge okay so I'm just over 70 percent as you can see almost 72 percent still pulling about 46 kilowatts hasn't really gone down too much you can see the temperature is uh, is still increasing it's at 36.2 C all right so I've just passed 80 percent here according to leaf spy um, I'm pulling about 36 37 kilowatts still temperatures are up between 34 and 37 degrees or so C so I'm almost at half an hour and I'm at uh, almost 81 percent uh, interesting that the the gom here on the dash does also uh, show the same type of data it kind of matches up now with leaf spy and also the battery temps here at around 81 percent or so state of charge or so. I haven't really moved much since um, it hit that uh, short of three quarters it's staying between the half and three quarter range all right guys so I'm going to stop it in a sec you can see I'm approaching 90 percent state of charge uh, I'm still pulling about 21 22 kilowatts at this point uh, so that's not too bad uh, by comparison at 90 percent it's been about 40 minutes just over 40 minutes to get to 90 percent and I'm um, at 374 kilometers and climbing and one thing I also wanted to show here is the um, graph that uh, Leaf Spy Pro nicely puts and I'll uh, hopefully you could see this but you can see that the temperature hasn't gone up that crazy and the uh, the charging has been fairly consistent forgot to get a quick pick of the uh, battery temp at the end of that uh, as you can see it hasn't really moved since the last spot so as you can see by this timer it's telling me 39 minutes to get 27.9 kilowatt hours of energy delivered all right guys so that's the end of my first charge uh, what I'm going to do in a couple of days is do a road trip and try to do two or three rapids in a row if I can uh, but uh, good first try at this. Um, I'm a little disappointed that I didn't get the initial uh, uh, pull speeds that I, I heard about from some other folks around the 60 to 70 range. But you know, 55 isn't bad to start with. So anyway, you'll see more of this charging in a couple of days when I start it up again. Well, hey guys, uh, this is the start of my uh, multiple charge journey today. It's a beautiful day on this Saturday and I'm heading out. Just had to do some running around, so now I'm going to get in the Leaf Plus and I'm going to drive around six to 700 kilometers and I plan to stop three times to charge and uh, to do fast charges and we'll see how the temperature is and how the car handles. All right, just wanted to show the starting GOM. I'm at 400 kilometers. I plugged it in last night to let it charge overnight. Uh, so it's showing 400 kilometers, 100% battery. If I bring up Leaf Spy Pro here quickly, and there we go. So it's showing 97.2 state of charge. Obviously the GOM shows 100, but it's never quite 100. There's a held back. 59.8 kilowatt hour. So if it's 62, it's about almost two, just over two kilowatt hours. That's uh, back in reserve. Temperature 24.6 to 23 to 24.6. So let's say 24 degrees Celsius as an average. Uh, Least by Pro shows 384 kilometers of range versus the 400 on the GOM. So let's see where uh, I'm going first. Just to show how the navigation works, I'll put in my first destination. Uh, let me put, put that address here. Let's see, street address. There we go. Looks like it's getting there. And uh, as I said in the intro, it's much quicker than it was. So yeah, 143 to my first destination. Uh, should be about an hour and a half. Going to highway north, there is an elevation change kind of going up in altitude north of the town of Barrie up into uh, just south of the Muskoka area where I'm going to do my first rapid there. So uh, it'll get a good run. It's only 143k, but it'll be it'll feel like longer because uh, some higher elevation change, maybe about a thousand uh, or feet or so of elevation change. I'll have to look at that later. So anyway, I'll start the first one and uh, everything is level set and we're ready to go. All 
right, so I'm here at my first stop in, uh, I don't even know where I am, the town, it's okay, north of the, well north of the Greater Toronto area. I'm at a charge point, and uh, it's my first stop, so here's some of the stats here, that uh, I've driven 167 kilometers, um, average six kilometers per kilowatt hour, um, average speed of about 71. When I was uh, able to move in the highway, I was keeping the speed between 106 and 110 kilometers per hour. You can do the uh, math to miles on that. So the temp's about halfway, as you can see, not too bad. That I've got 54.2% uh, percent state of charge and the GOM says 50, so it's pretty close. And the battery temperature, uh, I always pick the middle one, let's say for the average of 29.6 and it's 22 degrees outside. It's cooled down just a degree since I left. So there's all the numbers you can see. I'm going to plug in now and let's see what we pull. All right, so I've started the charge. We're pulling 43 kilowatts. This is a 50 kilowatt uh, max DC fast charger. So I'm pulling 43. I'm going to go to 80 and then stop. Here now, this is one thing I wanted to point out. This is kind of typical for Canada right now, or at least in, in Ontario, where we're still building out rapid charging stations. So as you can see here, we've got a charge point, a single only Chatmo CCS, a fast charger. Uh, down the way there you can see hopefully a row of uh, some level two chargers out of there and there's uh, four of them or three of them so that obviously will take more time but again the main thing is only got the one fast and this is a actually a nice complex if you can see here uh, big petro canada with a nice food complex places to sit places to walk uh, lots of parking all that stuff so we're slowly coming up to speed on the fully charged show, the second part that I just released, I talked to somebody about the grid serve and their forecourt complex, uh, complex uh, they want to build. They would certainly be nice here in Ontario where you know, have a single solitary uh, fast charging station amongst uh, where, they, where they really could put two or three more. Uh, could be a power issue. I know in a lot of these uh, outside the urban areas, when we get into more uh, rural areas of Canada, it can be challenging to get the power, but I know that there are other, other manufacturers trying to step up to that, but just wanted to point that out, something you have to think about when you plan your routes. All right, so uh, I've been about 20 minutes. I set my timer. I'm at 82% on the GOM and just about 82% on Leaf Spy here. So I wanted to stop it at 80 because uh, I have more than enough energy. And my temperature, 35.8. Let's Off to the second rapid charge. My second stop here at, for fast charging, and there are the stats there. Drove uh, 135 kilometers with 172 left, down to 44%. Quickly look at the battery temp on this, showing just uh, over a half, uh, a little down actually from what it was before. We're gonna set it up for charging, and there's the Leaf Spy to get the accurate numbers. Uh, just under 50% state of charge, 34.3 the average for the temperature. So, um, Pretty good. Now that was a mix of 80 kilometer, 80 to 80, 80 to 90 kilometer speeds per hour and uh, hills, up and down hills, because they went through along the lake. And there was also a temperature change, outside temperature change of six degrees. So uh, now I'll plug it in charge and let's see what we pull. All right, so I started, the, this is my second fast charge. It's pulling 42 kilowatts at these temperatures. That's according to the GOM and here's according to Lease by Pro. So 43 kilowatts, uh, just creeping up now past 43. So I'm gonna to go to 80%, probably about 20 minutes or so. I'll stop it and we'll see what everything's like then. All right, so I'm just gonna stop the charge here. It's at 80% on the GOM, 38, still pulling 38 kilowatts. Um, and on Leaf Spy, I just clicked over 80 and it's uh, pulling 38, almost 39 kilowatts. So it's remained fairly steady. Battery temp of 40, just under 41. And let's check the uh, display here for the battery temp. It's back to a little more than half, but uh, not three quarters, just slightly under. Hey guys, stop number three is my last stop. I'm cutting a little bit short because it's getting late and I still need to get, get home, which is a good hour and change. So uh, I stopped here at a, uh, another, my last DC fast charging stop. Let's look at the display and see what it shows. Okay, so as you can see, the uh, car's computer shows 54% um, state of charge. Uh, I went 93, just over 92 kilometers. 
And um, as you can see, I've done almost 400 kilometers in total. So let's go look at the um, Leaf Spy Pro. Okay, here's Leaf Spy Pro showing uh, just under 58% state of charge, so pretty close. Battery temperatures, uh, I'll pick the middle one, 39.4C, and 215 remaining on the to 5%, so it's pretty close. I have to admit that the um, GOM has been much more closer to Leaf Spy Pro than in the 40 kilowatt version. A little bit bigger variance there. This might be 5 to 8%, I think, maybe a variance as it goes, as it gets down. But again, I haven't got to too low. So uh, let me charge it up and uh, I'll put it to 80 and let's see what it pulls. So I, as we can see, I just started the third rapid charge here. Uh, it's pulling 44 kilowatts and battery temperature about up the same as it was before. Around the three quarter mark, I guess, or just be just shy of the three quarter mark. Let's see what Leaf Spy Pro shows it's pulling. And Leaf Spy Pro shows it's pulling 43, just about 44 kilowatts. So about the same. Pretty good. I'll let it go to 80 and see um, how hot I can get the battery. Uh, I've been timing these around 20, 25 minute charges. So I'll go for 20 minutes and see what happens. Okay, guys. Well, I'm going to stop the charging. You can see uh, it's pulling 39. I'm at uh, over 80%. And I just did 20 minutes, so I'm going to stop the charging and uh, let's see what the battery temp shows here. It's still around the three quarters mark, just shy of the three quarter, so it's holding pretty good. Let's see what Leaf Spy Pro says. So Leaf Spy shows just uh, about 81%, 43.7 is the mid range, still pulling 38 kilowatts. So I'm going to shut it off, and that'll be my last one until we get home now. Hey guys, this is the end destination. You can see uh, where I've got with the battery, 64% showing, uh, 68 kilometers. I cut it a little short, as I said. Let's see what Leaf Spy says. Leaf Spy, 66%, uh, average temp, 41 and a half, and 276 still to 5%, so it's fairly consistent. So there you go, that's the final temp for today. Yeah, so that's it for the road trip for uh, three tips. I'll put a sheet together now and uh, go through it with you. All right, while well, I'm here back in the studio, finally, it seems like weeks that I haven't been recording in the studio, but out and about from London and re car reviewing cars and all that stuff. So it's been a lot of fun. But I'm back here just to give you a quick summary of my experience with the Nissan Leaf Plus, the 2019 model year. Um, as you can see by the video, I think it, it performed very, very well overall. I mean, inside it's the same as a 2018 model year. You really won't tell a difference other than the infotainment system, which I went through already for you. Otherwise, the, the feel, uh, the materials, everything else is the same that you get in the 2018 model year. Obviously, the battery's bigger, so I went through performance. Uh, my, my view on the performance and also, of course, the economy or the, the range that the uh, vehicle uh, gives you and how it sustains for multiple charging. So hopefully that was good information for you. I wanted to wrap up the charging summary because there was a lot of numbers there. So let me start by one thing. So first of all, uh, if you recall on the 2018 model year, the 40 kilowatt hour versions, if you followed any of the uh, the Nissan forums and information, they run a ECU or the BMS version of uh, uh, 5SH2 Alpha is the, the version um, that they run. And I believe the upgrade to that or the BMS update that came out last year to help at least the European owners with uh, minimizing the, the amount of throttling that happens is the 5SH2C uh, as in Charlie, I believe that that's the version. Um, the version that the N Nissan Leaf Plus runs is the 5SA3 Alpha version of the software. So it is, again, a different uh, BMS software. It's not the same as in the 40 kilowatt hour version and that makes sense it's a bigger battery it's a heavier vehicle so it's got to it's got to do things a little bit differently it has the capability to up to 100 kilowatts of charging of course all that stuff so it's got to be different so that's if you're interested in that information that's the version for that i could find on leaf spy so as far as the um, range summary goes uh, you know i think it perf it performed very well and um, you know, I was, as I mentioned in the video, I was a little disappointed that I wasn't able to pull faster than about 54, 55 kilowatts in a 100 kilowatt Chatamo charger. I was really hoping to get 65 to 70 as been reported in other countries. Um, but uh, again, it could be an issue with 
the charger itself with the EVSE. I've talked to Petro Canada and they're looking into it because the, the vehicle is so new. Um, that's one of the first ones that's probably even attempted to charge at that station that they may just not have their software, the communications mapped properly. I don't know. Uh, that's just, you know, could be what it is. But, you know, at least it, it was over 50. So that's good. Uh, 55. And I think that that's reasonable to start with um, for fast charging as as we get more for ultra fast charging. As I mentioned, in southern Ontario, it's it's very it's a vast landscape right now, barren landscape of ultra fast chargers. So that's one of the first ones that's out there. But, you know, if you look at the chart that I have here uh, displayed, you can see all the numbers in a summary. And, I, you know, I, as I as I put them out during the video process, I think the takeaway here is uh, it was consistently starting the pull at about 45, uh, 44 to 45 kilowatts, as you can see, and ending when it got to around 80 percent or so at the 37 to 38 kilowatt pull. Uh, that is obviously different than the characteristics of the 40 kilowatt hour version uh, Nissan Leaf. Um, so I think that that's pretty good. Again, these are all stations that only can put out up to 50 kilowatts uh, that where I was doing the, the multiple fast charging on that day. So I think that that's pretty reasonable. For my day trip there, I did an overall distance of 463 kilometers. Uh, I had an efficiency rating of 6.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, according to the drive computer on the Leaf. And my average speed was 62 kilometers an hour over that distance. Again, that was a combination of about 105 to 110 kilometers on the 400 series highways and then on the regional roads where the speed limits are about 80 I was doing about uh, 80 88 to 92 type of range depending on the conditions most of the road was pretty wide open there were some areas where it was congested a little bit as you saw so I think overall uh, the Leaf Plus did very well um, I know some of you probably wanted me to get it down to uh, as close to zero as possible and see uh, and then, you know, take it up multiple times to see how I could affect the temperatures because the temperatures remained fairly, uh, they didn't increase as much as they do in the 40 kilowatt but pre, you know, BMS update. Um, starting temperature on that long road trip was 35.9 uh, degrees Celsius and I ended up at 43.8 after, after three charging three charging uh, times and uh, you know, four, 400 and some odd kilometers. So I think that's pretty good. I think what they've done as I mentioned in the video, what Nissan has stated that they've done with the pack with a, with a different chemistry and a different build and uh, d design of the, the cells themselves and the structure within a virtually the same housing is just slightly bigger to help with heat dissipation and heat tolerance, I think is working. Again, it's early to see how that's going to uh, fare up in the long run. But as I keep telling people, it has an eight year, uh, 160,000 or 100,000 mile 160,000 kilometer, 100,000 mile warranty on the battery for degradation. So, um, you know, if it's going to drop below 70%, then you've got some coverage. And eight years is a long time, in my opinion, I think, especially with battery technology the way it is. Now, I know it's not Tesla, you know, it's not the, the shining star that Tesla is from battery management, but again, you're not paying that, that Tesla price. And, you know, for the average everyday person, that's not going to most likely drive this thing to zero and then do multiple fast charges in one day with the extra range it gives you, uh, the, the necessity for two or three or you know three or more rapids in a day is gonna be a lot less because you do get that more range um, in the Nissan Leaf Plus. So I think it performed admirably well, in my opinion. It was a very comfortable car to drive and I never once was worried about range at all in my driving cycle. Now I, the routes, uh, the routes that I took were, you know, not as long. I couldn't really, as I mentioned, stretch it out uh, just because of the time involved in the day that I had to do that. I wanted to just throw this chart behind me as well. This is a Canadian price comparison. So I apologize. I don't have American prices or other countries, but you can go on the respective manufacturer websites and, you know, do build your own, own uh, vehicles there and you can get approximate pricing. Now this is based on MSRP pricing and what I could find on the websites. Your actual pricing, what you will get from a dealer when you inquire will be, or probably will be different than this, slightly different, but this is as close as I could get from a comparison. So as you can see, I've got a uh, five model uh, of the or six models of what I call the 60 kilowatt hour club quote unquote so these are vehicles that are that are at least 60 kilowatt hours in that 60 to 70 range you know uh, type range 60 to 65 which I think is a really good sweet spot and I'll tell you why in a sec um, but if you look at the pricing I've got the Kia Soul EV premium um, and the uh, Hyundai Kona EV uh, preferred uh, Nissan Leaf Plus there the Chevy Bolt Premier Edition, the Kia Nero EV SX Touring, 
and the Tesla Model 3 SR Plus. And these are, I've tried to match trim levels as close as popular, now obviously, as close as possible. Now obviously, you're going to get differences in each, each model and each trim versus the others. There's going to be some packages that have more tech than others. So you'll have to, you know, if you want something a little different, investigate this further. I just tried to get it as close to comparison as possible because it is hard to do that with, with different tech, especially with technology. You know, some of them offer, uh, you know, like ProPilot, of course, comes standard with the SL, which is all the driver aids. But on some of the others, you know, they could be options. So I had to look at that and, and factor in which trim level. But as you can see, the Nissan, you know, fits fairly well in a value priced model. Uh, doesn't uh, obviously beat the, the Kia Soul EV, which in my opinion is a bargain at uh, 45K. Now, these prices include the current Canadian federal incentive rebate that you can get for that all these models qualify for, which is the $5,000 incentive. And as I mentioned when I uh, rolled out the incentive program review a few shows ago, that this is done at point of sale. So it's not like you have to fill out a form and send away and wait three or four months for a check to come back. This is done at the time of sale at the dealer. They take it off the price after taxes. So if you look at the, the chart here, you'll see I have the MSRPs with, with what I was able to find for freight PDI fees, the subtotal you add to our 13% um, uh, tax here, and then we get a total price, and then the 5,000 comes off. It doesn't come off pre-tax. The government has to get their, the most amount of tax. That standard process, operating process everywhere, folks can't get away from that. So as you can see by price comparison, the LEAF is kind of in uh, just uh, in the lower part of the middle of the pack there, which is good, the lower being the lower price. Um, I think it, it's pretty well. It's pretty close to the to the Bolt, and uh, then you've got the Nero and the Tesla, of course, which are almost neck and neck, really with it with it within a couple of hundred dollars. So, but they are different vehicles. So you you would look at all these vehicles for different reasons. But what I wanted to provide, at least as a snapshot of comparable range vehicles, the Kona, of course, preferred has the the highest range out of all these models. That's rated at 450. Now these are EPA ranges, and and as you you saw in my video, I was getting more than the EPA range of 220 six miles you know I it started at 400 kilometers one day which you'll do the math but uh, it's more than 226 miles so that's typical with EVs when they're new especially that you're going to get higher than than rated EPA ranges there so um, and then over time it starts to level down a bit closer to that number um, it, I think it's as I've been saying about the leaf all along it's a great value type of all electric battery only vehicle and I say that because I don't think the LEAF scores a 10 in any category. So I know, you know, Alex on autos, he does all these different categories and ratings and other reviewers do ratings and they give it numbers and scores. I don't think the LEAF's going to score a 10 in any, any category you put it in. But what I do think is that it's consistently going to score well in all the categories. So overall, when you look at all the different components and metrics involved in measuring the car, I think the LEAF performs and offers quite a lot for the, the price value that you get, especially this plus version. However, in saying that, the 40, again, it's a, it's a less price than even this. And it's, it's a great vehicle to get people into battery electric vehicles that are quite comfortable with 150 mile or 240 kilometer daily range and that don't really do a lot of long trips so people that need a second car let's say in a family or you know their urban areas and most of their vehicle most of the driving is you know within within 30 40 50 miles you know 50 or so kilometers a day that kind of stuff the leaf 40 kilowatt is a great vehicle because it's even at a lower price point and it offers the same technology that is in the plus uh, virtually except for a couple of small things so I think, you know, Nissan's thought is let's put something in that value segment at the 150 mile club and let's get into that 200 plus mile uh, to range club by offering the 62 kilowatt version and, and being very competitive there. And I think they've done a great job at doing that. Um, I'm, I reference a movie that I've seen many, many times. I'm a big fan of Tom Clancy and the military novels that he writes. Uh, Hunt for Red October is probably my all-time favorite movie. I've watched it a zillion times. <laughs> I could almost recite it line by line. But uh, one of the movies, uh, Clear and Present Danger, which is based on the Jack Ryan series uh, that Harrison Ford starred in, there's a scene near the end of that movie um, if you haven't seen it, you know, I won't spoil it, but you know, where, where, where Harrison's character, Jack Ryan confronts the president with something that he's found. And the president uses a dialogue, something like, you know, you know, um, you're not going to say anything because you've got a chip in the big game. Now, you know, you're part of the big club and you're going to, you, you know, you're in that, that big boys club now with this chip that you have, that you can play at some point in time. 
And I use that analogy because I think really that this is what the Leaf Plus is for Nissan. This is their chip in the big boys game. You know, that that 200 plus mile club, I think, is the sweet spot for EVs. You know, the 220, 240 miles, whatever, that, that range, keeping it, you know, under... 50,000 or around 55,000 Canadian, 45, 40,000, you know, uh, US type of thing for that type of, for that range, I think is a sweet spot. And that's going to help uh, really drive EV adoption for those that don't really want an entry level, that want some higher range, maybe have range anxiety or do a lot more driving or, or do a lot more longer trips and want to have that comfort level of having a higher range. And these vehicles all offer that. And it has the the um, virtues of consistent fast charging experiences, um, consistent range. I think that it's it really is the sweet spot, and I think that the Leaf Plus uh, has hit that that big boys club in. And this is a great great vehicle to consider for that, as all of these vehicles that I showed up in the chart are. So my final summary is: I think the Leaf Plus is a fantastic fantastic um, all electric battery vehicle. If you like the looks, if you like the versatility that the four-door hatchback with decent roominess and really good cargo carrying capacity uh, will give you um, at, a, at, a, at a good price point compared to the others. Again, there are pros and cons for each. Um, I think the Nissan's got a winner here and this model is going to do quite well. This is going to really put them into that um, into that that market share that they uh, unfortunately ha haven't been able to hit yet with uh, the 40 kilowatt version. So this is going to do quite well. Uh, I think it's a great vehicle, so definitely something to consider. And I hope you enjoyed this vehicle, this uh, video review. Yeah, and I do things a little bit differently as some of the other guys. I want to relate it more to real driving experiences and what you're going to what you're going to see from uh, owning this car and how some of the features and functions work, so that you could be better informed and make a better decision. So again, you know, educating minds one tail pipe at a time is my motto. Any all-electric vehicle or any even a plug-in electric vehicle is a great alternative to an internal combustion engine at this point in time. Uh, if you're not fully comfortable with going all-electric, there are some great plug-in hybrid electric vehicle options as well. Anything with a plug is kind of where I'm going with. So I want to thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. hope it was informative. Please, uh, you know, put some comments on YouTube. Send me an email if you've got more questions and you want some more information. I pretty well put out what I know about this vehicle out on this in this video in this show but there's you know maybe there's some more info that i can find for you thank you again everybody who's a patreon supporter i really appreciate it if you are interested in thinking about uh, wanting to help me out with patreon i could always use the effort even a dollar a month uh, goes a long way to, in helping me to continue to produce shows and do what i have to do i'm hoping to do some more car reviews during the summer with some other models and of course continue on with my new shows and other things that pop up to get out so again thank you very much for watching and until my next show please everybody stay safe and I'll see you when I see you. Bye-bye.